2nd Edges 6 and 7. Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times? And when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Barakat the Yahweh, Barakat the Yahushai, Barakat the Yahweh, Barakat the Yahushai. All praise and glory unto Yahweh, by Hashem Yahushai, by Hashem Kakwadash. Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, who the world calls God. Yahweh Shai being the name of his beloved Son, who the world inwardly calls Jesus Christ. As their true names in the Lashwan Kodash, the ancient Hebrew. The only names you can call upon for salvation if you're an Israelite. All right. Um, which consists of you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Today, as you can see on the sign. As well as the Israelite foreigners that have taken on the appearance of the heathen. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And the blessings and salutations to the hopeful elect. I'm back with another lesson through the Spirit and Prophet Yahweh by Shema Shai. And the title I'm going to give this lesson is, The Princes Are Soon to Get Back on the Horse. Okay, the princes, being the Israelites, all right, because Yah Shar Allah, which is Israel in the, in the Hebrew, the Lashwan Kodash, breaks down to what? He, prince of the power. All right, Lucy translated, he is a prince of the, of the Most High. He is a prince of God. Okay, so the princes that I'm referring to are the Israelites, all right? The, the princes that the scriptures are referring to are us, the Israelites, okay? So the princes, the princes are soon to get back on the horse, okay? Horse representing the power seat, okay? Because right now, we're, or we've been for centuries now, we've been in captivity over here uh, in the Americas, you know, captive, Okay, exiled from our land, you know, um, you know, experiencing all type of pain and suffering. But now we're at the end of that suffering. Okay, now it's time for these uh, heathens, mainly Esau, Edom, to, uh, you know, feel the pain. So the Lord, you know, about to um, flip this thing upside, upside, uh, upside down, which is going to make it, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, right side up. If you, can, you know, if that makes sense. All right. So the princes are soon to get back on the horse. All right. So, of course, I want to start with Ecclesiastes 10 and 6. It says, folly is set in great dignity and the rich sit in a, in a low place. Okay. Folly is set in great dignity. And that's, you know, in Esau's world, you know, people are, are making it, uh, 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 making it an effort to go viral these days, you know, going viral, you know, who could be the dumbest, who could be, who could do the most vilest things to get attention, man, you know, we're living in a time where attention is currency, you know, it says folly is set in a great dignity and the rich sit in a low place, who are the rich, the Israelites, all right, we sit in a low place, why, because we're, we've been cursed from the most high, okay, we've been cursed, all right, go read, um, uh, Deuteronomy 28th chapter, the 15th verse, all the way down to the 68th verse. Okay, and it'll tell you about the current that uh, it'll tell you about the curses that we experience, man. You know, in our everyday lives. All right, then playing out. You know, and our parents were under these same curses. Their parents were under these same curses. So on and so on, man. Because we didn't, we didn't, uh, we didn't uh, obey our power. Okay, so we, we got a heavenly ass whooping, man. So it says, I have seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. Okay, so I have seen servants upon horses. The scriptures tell us in Genesis, the 25th chapter, that um, the elders should serve the younger. Okay, Esau was born first. So he's the servant that is sitting upon the horse right now. Like that statue that they had in front of, uh, I forget what museum it, it was over there in New York. All right, they had a statue. They took it down, though, I think last year or the year before, where you had, uh, I think it was Theodore Roosevelt upon a, um, a horse, and to his right, he, he had a, a, a Jake, and to his left, he had a Gadite, you know? So this, 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 uh, right, that, 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 that statue was, was spiritual. And the fact that it was taken down is even more spiritual. <laughs> All right, because this man is, is, is uh, about to be taken out of power, man. 
that statue is no, no longer going to be, uh, you know, a sign of his dominance over us, his conquering over us. All right. So it says, I have seen servants upon horses, right? Esau Edom is in the power seat. Horse represents power, you know? You always hear those two words, uh, you know, together. Horsepower, horsepower, you know? <clears throat> Just like it explains how a shot coming back in a white horse. Pure power, man. It says, I have seen servants upon horses and princes, right? The Israelites. All right, you, you Jakes, you know, from whatever respective tribe. As you can see, uh, uh, the stick, okay, the, the sign showing you who you truly are in the side of Yahweh by Shema Shai. This is our true identity, okay, not what the white man labeled us. This is who we truly are, man, okay? So these are the princes of Yahweh by Shema Shai. These are the children of Israel, okay? So it says, I have seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. Okay, and, and we've been uh, lowered and brought down to the, um, the the level of a servant. You know, that's how this, that's how these heathens look at us, man. We're, the, we're you know, we're the, uh, uh, the slaves of society, man. All right, the scriptures speak of us being off scurrying. The scriptures speak of us being um, uh, the nation. Uh, 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 what is it? Uh, how does it go? I forget exactly how it goes. Let me see. Zephaniah 2. Yeah, Ze Zephaniah 2 and 1 says, Gather yourselves together. Yeah. Gather together, O nation not desired. All right. We're that nation that's not desired. We're, we've been brought to a, 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 a very low estate, man. Actually, the lowest estate that any nation has been, uh, you know, especially, I mean, in this, especially in this world, we are at the bottom. You know? So going back real quick. Ecclesiastes 10 and 6 is, or 7. It says, I have seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. Okay, but that's about to flip. All right, right now we're at the end of this man's world. He's about to experience all type of uh, judgment. You know, mainly being a thousand years of, of captivity, man. All right, but the Lord's going to raise us up and uh, 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 bless us with our own world, our own kingdom. You know, that's conducive to our spirit, man. Because this world is, is completely ass backwards, man. You know, but our world is going to be, you know, uh, proper, man, and, and totally righteous, man. All right, so let's go to, uh, let's go to Luke. Let's go to Luke 16, the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. Okay, Luke 16 and 19, it says, There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen, representing Esau, Edom, and fares so, so, sumptuously every day, right? They're living it up, right? They had their time, you know, the scripture said that they're, they're not plagued like other men, you know? It says, and there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, right? Representing us. All right. And begging is a bit, is very low, man. It says, which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, right? That's all our people want is a piece of the pie, they say, you know, cr which are really crumbs. You got all these jakes that are millionaires and shit. They're really, they're really uh, high paid slaves, man. High paid servants. You know, they can't speak their own mind. They can't do shit but serve Satan uh, via the, the so called white man, man. All right, but we're, we, we've we been brought to a low state. It says, a desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his swords, representing other nations, man. They capitalize upon our low estate. You know, they have all these businesses in our neighborhoods just profiting off of us man you know well here it is we can't we can't have no uh, businesses in our own neighborhood not for long right because we're under curses man it's just it's just cursed our basket is cursed it says and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into abraham's bosom right into the kingdom the rich man also died and was buried 
And in hell, he lifted up his eyes. Now, a Christian will hear that and think, you know, it's actually talking about hell that they, that they teach in the churches. No, this is talking about slavery, captivity. All right, because right now, as Israelites in Esau's world, we're in hell, man. But when he comes in our world, he's going to be in hell. He's going to be getting jacked up every day. It says, and in hell, he lifted up his eyes, right? Because he was feeling that. It says being in torments. He was feeling it, man. Feeling that pain. Okay, because that's that's where you Edomites are straight going. You think you could do commit all these atrocities and crimes against the nation of Israel and nothing's going to happen to you? Nah, man, you better ask Pharaoh how it go. All right, you better ask Pharaoh how the Lord get down. It says, and in hell he lifted up his eyes, right, in slavery. In the kingdom of heaven, he's going to be in bondage, hard bondage. Being in torments and see it, see it, Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And now he's going to want mercy. Now he wants, now he desires mercy. But when you, when you were the, uh, on the other side of mercy, when you could have distributed mercy, you had no mercy, man. So the scriptures say what? James 2 and 13. There should be no mercy, uh, uh, on him that showed no mercy. Okay. It says, and he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. Right? He's going to, he's going to, um, you know, ask for mercy, ask for us to let off the gas, so to speak, let off his neck. Right? But Abraham said, son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, right? Living it up, all type of, uh, I mean, the most beautiful lands. You know, you get the respect from all the people, right? You had your good things. You know, you own every goddamn thing. All right. It says, son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things. Thy, thy good things and likewise Lazarus evil things right that's all we've been experiencing are bad times <laughs> you know what I'm saying uh, 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 the, end of, the, the, the bad end of the stick however that phrase goes that's all we've been getting a foot up our ass man and spitting our face getting called all type of names and being demonized no matter where, where you go on this earth Jake is shitting on man no matter where you go, man. So that's the evil things, man. It says, but now he is comforted, right? The Lord is going to comfort us concerning all this pain, man. The scripture say we ain't going to see no more sorrow, no more pain, no more crying, none of that, man. No more death. All right? So, but now he is comforted and thou art tormented, all right? And this is the faith and the patience of the saints, man. All right? Because we, we desire... We know we we desire that payback, man, that revenge, and that's a righteous thing with Yahweh by Shmuel for us to uh, 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 afflict them that have troubled us, man. That's a righteous thing with Yahweh by Shmuel Shai, man. So this is what we waiting on, man, for you devils to be tormented, for you to see how how it feels, man. You know, for you to experience the curses that we've been under, but it's gonna be far worse. Far worse for you, man, than it, than than it was for us. Because here it is, Yahweh by Shemal Shai loved us, man. All right, he did all that, all that, all that to us out of love. So I can only imagine what he's gonna do to you, the ones that he hate, man. The scripture speak about uh, a thousand times worse enemies, a thousand times worse. Uh, a thousand worse. Here we go. Wisdom of Solomon 12 and 22, it says, Therefore, whereas thou dost chasten us, thou scourgest our enemies a thousand times more. Right? You're going to get it a thousand times more. To, in, to the intent that when we judge, we should carefully think of thy goodness. And when we ourselves are judged, we should look for mercy. Right? And we understand, you know, going through, 
through through hell as this. You know, we we understand how. Uh, you know, we know we understand the balance, man, of it all now. You know, but you gonna get it a thousand times worse, my man. Okay. So the princes are soon to get back on the horse. The Lord going, he going, you know, trade in places, man. Flip things right side up. Real soon, man. It has to be Lord's will, man. Within, you know, next couple years, man. Lord's will. I'm going to end it here with, uh. Sirach 5 and, I mean, Sirach 11 and 5. It says, many kings have sat down upon the ground, and one that was never thought of have worn a crown. Okay, and that's what's coming. All right, no one is expecting the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans to rule. But guess what? Newsflash. That's what's coming next. Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth, man. All right? It ain't, it ain't the Asian man. It ain't the white man. None of y'all, man. It's us, the Israelites, man. The scriptures say it. Let me get it. Daniel 7 and 18, it says, But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever, man. All right, so the princes are soon to get back on the horse. Lord as well as sooner than later, giving all praise and glory unto Yahweh, by Hashem, by Hashem, by Until next time, Shalom.